Zimno is a large, non-aggressive, peaceful planet at the center of Galaxy 5. It is a non-organic planet populated by descendants of the Homo sapiens that used to inhabit the organic-based planet Platon. There are no longer any organic Homo sapiens in either Zimnil or Platon. They are now both inhabited by electro people, people with organic brains and electromechanical bodies. When Platon was still inhabited by advanced Homo sapiens around the year 5,490, they began experimenting with electro body parts. The first body parts they vetted were a mixture of organic and electronics and were rather crude by today's standards. But it was still a very good beginning and for a time they worked quite well. The first fully functional all electric uh, body, the PL300, was developed on Platon in the year 5,005,036. And the first Homo sapien brain was successfully transferred into the PL300 five years later in 5,541. Research and development of the electro bodies has also been going on on Walmap, Zimnil, and several other of the advanced brain planets in this part of the galaxy but they were never able to make a successful brain transfer because they were working with mostly synthetic organic body parts. These parts would not hold up under light speed space travel. It was the discovery of Zeltex on Zimnil that allowed electro body parts to be made strong enough to hold up under rigorous space travel conditions. Zimnil is now the main supplier of electro bodies for the entire galaxy. Most advanced planets use only the Z500 Zimnil electrobody for their transfers. The Z501 looks and functions like the organic body in almost every way. It is essential because the function properly, all connections must correspond to the original organic body. In spite of the development of the, of the Nephron 703 on planet Trixton, which overrides most of the organic body functions, the Z501 is still the most used brain container by far. There are still so many organic based planets in this part of the galaxy with the organic people inhabiting them that the Z501 remains the electro body of choice. Electro people still have to commingle with organic body people in order to do business. So the 501 is the organic features with its organic features like arms, legs, hands and fingers will probably remain popular until sometime in the future when all planets evolve to the electron age. Another feature that makes the Z501 cost effective is the fact that it will keep an organic brain functioning with good efficiency and low maintenance for up to 300 years. Organic bodies only last about half that long. The oldest known organic lasted 150 years, but it started to malfunction when it reached 125. Brains on organic bodies don't function very well in the first place. There are too many disease-prone body parts that distract the brain's ability to think and concentrate properly. The Center for Elect Electronic Body Research has been, wor been working on a new version of the 501, the Z800, which is supposed to last up to 400 years, but as yet they have nothing to show for their 20 years of research and millions of yebs spent. Originally, the brain was transferred from the, its organic body into the electro body, after it had been allowed to develop an organic body for about 20 years. Early scientists believed that it took that long for the brain to develop and mature properly. <clears throat> but it's not the case anymore. Since the development of new DNA technology, organic brains are now grown in the laboratory and they have no need to be nurtured in an organic body. Brains are grown in the lab and then transferred directly into an electro body. Gender also used to be an issue. At one time, female brains were transferred into female-like electrobodies and males into male-like electrobodies, but that practice didn't last long. Scientists soon found that there was no difference in efficiency between male and female brains. Outside the scientific community, however, there's still some debate. Some feel that the male brain functions better in matters of war and other forms of aggressive posturing that <clears throat> than does the female brain. There are those who believe that in spite of all the advances made in the area of body and brain technology, the brain still clings to its evolutionary past and that many of the homo sapien traits still remain lodged deep in the DNA of the brain. 
For that reason, though gender is no longer a scientific issue, brain transfer records still show the gender of DNA donor. The first one thing everyone agrees on, the brain becomes twice as intelligent in the electro body than it could, ever could in an organic body. In the electro body, more of the intelligent beams that travel with the life energizing beams, or LEB, as it is referred to, are absorbed into the brain when it is not encased within the skull. It was this higher intelligence that allowed LEB theory to develop. The LEB theory gave new credence to the Darwin evolution theory, which had fallen out of favor after revival in the middle Homo sapien age. The Leb theory was developed not long after the first mass transfers of Homo sapien brains into the Z501 trans electrobodies. Once a certain level of intelligence was reached by the masses, the old, old, old Homo sapien god belief system, which violently opposed the Darwin theory, began to crumble. The belief that one's body and soul was created in the image of an all-knowing, all-seeing God was no longer credible. It falls short of reality when one knows that one's electrobody was developed and engineered on the planet Zimnil. It became common knowledge that God did not exist. One could tour the electrobody factory on Zimnil if one needed proof. For the electro people, the religious Homo sapiens based theory of one God is, has been replaced with the Leb theory. The Leb theory, in essence, is the theory that life is stimulated in all organic matter by certain life energizing beams that permeate the universe. These beams are similar to gravity, that is, they are only made manifest when they become in contact with organic matter. Therefore, life is created and defined by these life energizing beings. All that is needed to experience life is to have a brain, no body required. Because no one is yet to define just where these beams originate, it has given rise once again to a God-driven theory about life on the, in the universe. There are currently two theories. One is science-based, one is religion-based. The science-based levers believe that science will one day pro provide an answer as to where these beams originate. The religious-based levers, called God-force believers, believe that God is the source of these beams and no further investigation is necessary. While that argument goes on within the electro people community, the traditional organic based belief system of a single God responsible for it all is still alive within the Homo sapien community. God is not dead in this galaxy. There are still many organic based planets within light speed travel range of Zimnil that are in early phase of development. Some of these planets, such as Fignan, Ut, and Flecton, have populations of Homo sapiens that, are, that still believe in the all-knowing, all-seeing, one-god religious theory. And their ranks are still growing. The Homo Neanderthals in the galaxy, who at the moment have no belief system at all, will one day evolve to the point of embracing this organic-based belief system. It's a national, natural organic progression. It's evolution. There are, those, there, are, there are also those planets whose people are on the cusp. That is, they are advanced organic Homo sapiens with a brain size of about 2,500 centimeters. They are almost ready to become electro people. It is these people that the God Force Lab Theory electro people are working on. They want to convert them to their belief about the origin of life energizing beams before they become too enamored with the science that produced the electrobody. They send missionaries throughout the galaxy in hopes of converting these advanced Homo sapiens, soon to be electro people, into believing their God Force theory. Leb science people tolerate the God Force people and think of them more as a nuisance than a threat to science or the peace and stability of the galaxy.